This video is going to show a two-sided machining. Uh, this is going to be a, the model is a, a prop, uh, airplane prop off a model airplane. And instead of using the bottom left corner for zero zero, I'm going to actually make a new zero location out in the middle of the table, and have the zero in the uh, middle of the part. So what I'm going to cut here is two hash lines that are going to intersect where my zero zero location is. And you'll have to refer to the um, files that go along with this to see the file and why uh, the reason I'm doing this, as well as watching through the video several times. Um, I've taken a sharpie here and just uh, stenciled in those V lines that I just carved in. So now I know where my zero zero point is. I've got lines on the center of the length and the center of the width of my block. And this is so I can eyeball the blank down to the machine and get it right where it needs to be for lining up with zero zero in the part file. This doesn't have to be perfect at this point. This can be fine just getting it by eye. The next thing you'll do is run the file for indexing pins. And you go ahead and run those right into the machine bed. So we're going to run them into the machine bed and we're also going to run them into the top of the part. So when we flip over the part the indexing pins from the top will now go down into the indexing pins in the table. And you'll see that as the video goes on. You gotta make sure you hold it down. So line it back up with the lines. Pre-drill it if it's hardwood and screw it down in and make sure it's, it's held down good. If it has any wobble you don't want to cut. So the next thing we have to do is drill those same indexing pins in the top of this blank. So now I've re-zeroed to the top of the blank and now I'm going to run that same file of indexing pins into the top of into the top of the blank. So when this is done, just leave it held down and go ahead and run your top file. You're going to have two tool paths here. You'll have one for the top of the part and one for the bottom. So right now we're running the top of the part. And what it's doing is a roughing tool path. It's auging out a lot of material at a fast rate. And this is up above the finished part, so you don't have to worry about it affecting the finished surface. What it's actually doing is staying about 0.2 above your uh, finished part. And then what will happen is it'll get done roughing, and it will now slow down and do a finishing tool path, which is now uh, a lot slower and a lot um, a lot less step over so it can get a lot finer detail and this is how you achieve uh, 3D detail is with a ball nose and a, and a 9 percent step over approximately and when you see it scroll in here you'll see it going from the rough roughing to the fine finish toolpath that's practically a finished edge so let this first side run it'll take approximately 20 minutes by the time you get it screwed down and started cutting and it's ready to be removed it's about a 20 minute file I've got it sped up here for the video so the machine will move out of the way and what you'll need to do is is clean off that surface we're gonna do a flip operation where we need to have this new top surface flipped upside down so any debris or anything on the table or hanging off the machine blank is going to affect your zero. So make sure that you clean the table and you, um, any little slivers or anything that are sticking up, uh, remove that stuff so it's not going to affect it. I'm also putting an X down there. That way I make sure I know that end is over on the left hand side. When I flip it over, I just want to flip it over from top to bottom. I don't want to flip ends. If I flip ends, then I'm going to be in trouble with my, my file lining up. So watch how I, I don't do anything but just flip it straight over. So here's the file. There's the dowel pins that go in the 3 8 holes. And I'm just going to slide this back, rotate it over 180 degrees. It's going to line up with those indexing pins in the table. So now my part is completely lined up on the opposite side. So those indexing pins allow it to flip completely over on itself. It doesn't matter if the blank was off in the model. It's the model and the zero, zero indexing holes that are lined back up now. So re-screw re it, get it held down, make sure it's in there tight, and then go ahead and start running your bottom file. So just a, a, a note from this example. Notice how on the edge here we can see through the blank. We can see the edge um, 
I would recommend having a wider blank. This was only a two and a half inch blank where the cutter obviously came out on the edge over there. Uh, what I found with this was uh, a lot of those thin little slivers and chunks would uh, catch in the bit and rip and, and, and make really loud noises and what it could do is end up if you had a small enough bit it could break your bit so I'd recommend a blank around three and a half inches you have a little bit more waste and material but the bit never exposes itself from the side and it just it's a cleaner safer cut so the roughing just got done on the bottom and now it's switched to the finishing toolpath and you can see every time it goes by it makes a lot smoother of an edge it's you know near perfect to pull off and be um, finished quality once this comes off you will have to remove it from the tabs there's tabs on the end you'll have to cut off and um, you know it's ready then for the stain or whatever you're going to do with it before assembly so once it's pulled off though uh, just inspect it and make sure you're happy with your file. Always do a demos first on scrap material. And there's your two-sided flip.